I welcome to A Watchman's Journal. I'm Diana Larkin. Thank you for joining me today as we go over the powerful prophetic words I've heard, dreams and encounters that I've been given that all paint a picture of a battle, but of a bright future with victory ahead. This episode is A September to Remember. All right. Wow. That, I think, is going to be very significant in our lives. I I wanted to mention here at the beginning a few other nations to add to our family. Um, We need to lift each other up in prayer. We need to hope and believe for other nations as much as we do for our own. All right, so welcoming um, Guyana, South America, the Philippines, Austria, And we have a South African who lives in Taiwan. So the world is listening to what the Father is saying. And we are coming into one accord, into unity, into bringing us into the kingdom age that he has for us. All right. Um, And I did want to mention, too, quite a few of you sent in photos, videos, and articles about unusual meteors raining down on the earth. And they felt that it was a confirmation of the word that I heard the father spoke about meteoric judgment. And that was on August 16th of 2024. You can look that up on my blog if you haven't read it yet. My blog is dianalarkin.blogspot.com. And also the action items at the end of our journal entries for today will contain prayer points for us all to focus on. And that'll be on the blog as well, as long as well as all the entries that I read today so that you can access them again. All the information you need, my email, anything else where I post is in the description box under the title of the video. You do have to click it open a couple times to see all those things. Okay. All right. Let's jump in with August 27th of 2024. I don't know if you can believe it, that August is already gone, but here we are into September, sailing along under his grace and mercy. This one is called Foolhardy Decisions. So I looked up foolhardy. It says unthinking recklessness with disregard for danger. So he said to me that morning, the enemy camp has spent years assessing the mindsets of the people. They have strategically launched lies and disinformation that have convinced people to give up their rights and freedoms in order to be protected. Of course, the irony is that those who proclaim they want to protect you are the very ones trying to destroy you. It is time for my army of light to become strategic. The time is ripe for you to assess the temperature of the enemy's camp. Where once they were focused and unified in their purpose to subjugate and control the masses, they have become double-minded. One minute, their arrogant pride asserts itself, and they are sure their dark, destructive schemes will bring you under their control. The next, they realize that everything around them is shaking and threatening to pull apart at the seams. What they fear most, their exposure, is breathing down their necks and threatening to destroy their greedy, self-focused lives. Now, it is time for you to sow foolhardy decisions into their camp. Ask my host to make the bait of foolhardy decisions irresistible to the conflicted darkness. Ask my angels to whisper suggestions into the enemy's camp that they make foolhardy decisions very appealing. Send arrows of fear of the future fear of the failure, fear of loss into the enemy's camp. These are the arrows they shot at you, but you are sending these arrows as boomerangs back into their camp. Rising fear will set the stage for foolhardy decisions that will result in their complete exposure and downfall. 
This is your strategic weapon to launch into the enemy's camp. Foolhardy decisions. And it just came into my mind, too. That's why the, the Father continually warns us not to enter into fear, because you do make foolish decisions when you are acting out of fear. So this is our opportunity to do this to the enemy. What they sent against us, we boomerang back into their camp. We have a journal nugget that's from two years ago that I want you to hear from August 27th of 2022 called The Great Reset. And I just want you to know that he's been speaking the same thing to us and continually confirming to us that this is his word and his promise to us. Uh, it's called Imagine, besides being The Great Reset. Kind of gave me two titles for the, for this one. Imagine a world without so many viruses, cancer, diabetes, and heart disease. Imagine a world where the quality of life is good, without the, all the drugs with awful side effects. Imagine a pharmaceutical industry that is for you and not against you. Imagine a world where leaders walk in integrity and serve the people instead of stealing your wealth for their own greedy purposes. Imagine a church that displays my glory, my healing, and my love. Life will re really be this good after my rescue operation and my great reset. Your enemy is imploding, and they will all fall under my judgment and justice. Continue to partner with me in nullifying their desperate and angry schemes. I am with you. The host are with you. And we will triumph. Look ahead and imagine what your world would be like when evil is brought down and light and life are established. It's good for us to think on those things. August 28th of 2024, darkness is extinguished. I spoke to you about the time of expansion, this was last week, of both the dark and the light. I will allow the darkness to flame up in a seeming great display of destructive power, a seeming great display of destructive power. Those who do not really know me will be terrified, but not you, army of light. You know that I am allowing the darkness to fully expose themselves so that there is no doubt about their evil plans, darkened hearts, and selfish greed. Who serves the darkness and who serves the light will be out in the open for all to see. The voice and power of Leviathan Media will be completely broken because it will be revealed that they were the mouthpiece of the darkness, spreading lies and fear in order to control the masses. Great will be their fall. As you see the evil plans of the darkness explode in a huge flame, know that I have given my forces of light the power and authority to extinguish the darkness. When you see that scary flame fill the skies, take authority over that dark fire and bind its power to cause destruction and fear. You have been given a fire hose of power. Aim it at the fire and say, the flood of the river of life is being poured on you. We say, the darkness is extinguished. Watch as the flames die down and only the ashes of the evil empire will remain. And I will scatter these ashes with the breath of my mouth. You will look around with wonder and thanksgiving and you will declare the darkness is extinguished. If you want a biblical um, reference and authority on this, I would read Psalm 18. All these things are really included in that powerful, powerful psalm. All right, let's do a journal nugget from August 28th, 2023. Warring, worship, and wonder. We'll just do a little bit of this one. The enemy is throwing everything he can at you to distract you, to make you fearful, to overwhelm you. I am telling you to arise and to truly believe that I am so much greater than your limited power enemy. Set your face like flint and keep these three as the focus of your life 
warring worship and wonder. Begin each day with leaning into my goodness. And that's where we get strengthened. He says, this is how you will stay strong in the fierce battle and how you will finish well. Abide in my strength in the warring worship and wonder. Never lose the wonder of who he is. And when you worship him, all the mountains, those huge problems, become molehills because the spirit of the God enters in and the kingdom is manifested. And you know that you're walking in greater power and authority than anything the darkness has. August 29th, 2024, it will overtake you. All right, this word began with a dream I had on August 28th of 2024. In the dream, I was in the upper story of an old hotel-type building. I stuck my head out the window and turned my head to see a lovely rainbow arching over the huge mountain that was in back of the hotel. The main color I remember seeing was lavender. Oh, good. I wore that today. <laughs> Totally not, uh, you know, I wasn't thinking of that. But So the interpretation of this dream, I called it a rainbow overtaking me. I have stuck my neck out spiritually in believing God's promises for this season. And he is assuring me that his promises and his covenant blessings will overtake me. Usually things behind you in a dream would represent the past. But in this case, case they speak of being overtaken by his goodness because I turned to face it. Like instead of it being in the past, it's my future that's coming at me. All right. Uh, meaning of the color lavender. It's a combination of purple, which is royalty and covenant and white, which is purity. It is Holy Spirit breathing into the earth, new beginnings in the steadfast love of holiness. It is loving removal of impurities and blessings of impartation. Wow, that kind of sums up the season we have been in, doesn't it? We've all been being purified. Our motives, our hearts, the things that we've carried around for years that we don't need, we have been getting rid of those. And that's in preparation for the Father wiping the evil out. When he comes to judge, he does not want to have to judge you. So that's why he's giving us opportunities to seek cleansing in him. And it's, he's never angry with us or disappointed. He's just calling us higher and freer in him. All right. So the father said to me in response to this dream, you have been watching and waiting for my promises to come to you. But I will tell you that suddenly they will overtake you. All the hardships, losses, and warfare will all be worth it. All, let's see, when my, it will all be worth it when my blessings overtake you. My promises will crown your life with my goodness, my purity, and my covenant promises. You will lack nothing, and you will have plenty to share with those who did not believe my prophets, but clung to the traditions and doctrines of men. When they see the wonder of what will overtake you, they will be awakened to faith in a living, supernatural God. I will surprise them with my love and my goodness, and they will joyfully pursue my heart and my ways. Because you have stayed on the battlefront with me and have not turned back, and because you believed my promises of a rescue and the dawning of the kingdom age, your rewards will be great. My blessings will be full and amazing, but with my purity on them, so that they do not cause greed or hoarding. As you are freely blessed, you will freely give, and the cycle of blessing will be established. The kingdom age will be ushered in as my blessings overtake you. Good word. All right, we have a journal nugget from two years ago, August 29th, 2022. Just a few sentences from this one. It's called a near-death experience. He said, let's talk about a near-death experience. The main outcome of a near-death experience is that it does not end in death. 
it ends in life. <laughs> I don't know if you ever, that was like a whole new perception for me, a much more positive one. The father said this death of freedom and light has accelerated in the last few years. This is what the darkness has been doing for many, many, many years, but it has accelerated because they began to sense a rising righteous opposition. That's us. And panic pushed them to ramp up their death schemes for your land. Remember that I am the God of resurrection power and that nothing is too difficult for me. I have determined that America shall live and she will not die. Declare and decree that America will rise again as a beacon of my hope and freedom to the world. She shall not die. She shall live. Those are powerful, powerful declarations to make. August 30th, 2024, the movements of my heart. This is an invitation to draw near, near, near to the Father's heart. The Father said, tune into the movements of my heart. I will signal to you that I want you to draw near and to fellowship with you, that I want to share my heart with you, and that I want to give you strategic directions or corrections. When a sound, a smell, a feeling comes to your attention, it is me signaling to you my desire to have you come into my presence so that I can draw you into an intimate place in my heart. As you focus your attention on me, you will receive my deep love that satisfies every desire of your heart. I will give you creative ideas and help in solving problems. I will disclose divine intel to keep you safe and to cause you to prosper. I have so much to offer you if you will just learn to be sensitive to the movements of my heart. Don't waste time being frustrated or fearful. I will show you solutions to frustrating problems if you will respond to my nudge to seek me and my wisdom. If you will draw near to me when you are fearful, I will show you that your mountain of fear is really a molehill in my mighty power. The more you learn to tune into the movements of my heart, the more peace and rest you will that will fill your life and strife and anxiety will disappear. Ask Holy Spirit to make you super sensitive to the movements of my heart. And you will be on the path of divine union with me that will give your life purpose, grace, and deep rest. Wow. Let me give you some um, practical examples of how you can sense the movements of his heart. It's taken me my whole life to figure these things out. And I am sorry to be so slow, Holy Spirit, but he didn't give up. He kept persisting and pursuing me. As a child, there was a sound that captivated me. And it was at my grandparents' home. They had a ranch in Wyoming, but she had planted cottonwoods all along the front of where the house stood. And I don't know if you've heard the wind through cottonwoods, but it's a sound like no other. It is a beautiful sound. And that sound would arrest me. I would just go out on the swing all by myself and listen to the wind in the cottonwood trees. It was God calling me to his heart where I began. Another example. Okay, that was a sound of a smell. When I would walk into a florist shop, that combination of that earthy and floral scent would hit me. And it was like, I love this smell so much. Should I work here? Should I, should I live here? And it took me a long time to figure out that was the smell of the Father to me when I was in him in heaven. And so that's why it so arrested me. And I can let it draw me to his heart. All right, there's other things, but I hope that's enough to, you know, give you an idea of when he's pursuing you and it doesn't take you so long to respond. All right, we have a journal nugget from two years ago. I want you to see how much he has been speaking into this time. Same thing. And we are going to see these come into more and more fulfillment. I think... 
particularly in this year. All right, this is August 30th, 2022. It's called The Day the World Stood Still. The sudden reveal of darkness that I bring will be so shocking that it will, re it will be remembered as the day the world stood still. It will be necessary to pause life as usual so that all will realize the momentous changes that are necessary to save the world from the darkness that threatened to swallow it up. All eyes must be on the reveal that I showcase of diabolical plans of death and destruction and the greedy, selfish, grasping hearts and minds of the arrogant elite and of the fools who served them. The day the world stood still will be a day to awaken and to realize how deceived and blind they have been. As a new nation is born out of the fires of the wicked and all their corrupted systems, there will be born a vigilance to preserve freedom and to highly esteem truth and justice. A free and uncompromised media will be demanded by the people. And I have been preparing truth tellers who will fulfill this role with integrity. Truth tellers are called to integrity, not to the schemes of the darkness, not to putting out disinformation just because you'll get likes and people following you, not to go on this thin wisp of a, something that sounds good and you think the people want to hear it, so you say it. That is not a truth teller. Be one with integrity. A beautiful and strong unity will emerge because all of the schemes to divide people will be exposed and everyone will value being an American. They will join together to rebuild, to restore, and to make better the foundations of this nation on justice and righteousness. Those who were radicalized will see they were dupes being used by the darkness. There will be a widespread turning to my son to be cleansed and to embrace the beautiful gift of salvation. There will be a fresh start for your land, and my army of light and my church will joyfully disciple a nation. Do not fear or be anxious, but wait for the day the world stood still, because it will usher in a whole new era. All right, August 30th, 2020, we're going to go back four years for this journal nugget. Don't quit. There is a reward. Already people in 2020, they were ready to throw in the towel, but... And it's gotten more difficult. But you know what? We're still standing. We're still believing. And there is a reward waiting. The Father said, when you are tempted to quit because the battle is so fierce and relentless, remember that there is a reward for finishing well. Don't miss out on the great joy of being a part of defeating the darkness. This honor belongs to those who refuse to lay down their swords and their shields no matter the pressure or the cost. When the battle is won, and it will be, he said, you will have the honor of laying your shield before my throne as your sacrifice of worship. And I will reward you with honor, blessing, and restoration. Do not take the bait of the enemy's intimidation or discouragement. Ask me, and I will strengthen you in the inner man. Do not back down and do not back out. Remain faithful to the end because your reward will be great. Psalm 47, verse 9b. Um, I think this is in the Passion Translation. I didn't write that down. Every warrior's shield is now lowered, is now lowered as surrendered trophies before this king. He has taken his throne high and lofty, exalted over all. All right, let's move on to August 31st, 2024, a September to remember. I love it when he rhymes, <laughs> and he does too. He said, get ready for a September to remember. Things will be breaking out on every side. 
explosions of my kingdom power, and desperate moves by the empire of deception. You will see those partnered with darkness spew out more threats against your freedoms, try to pass more tyrannical laws to control you, and frantically try to keep a grip on the narrative by more and more lies and deceptions. Now, this is not just for our nation. This is a worldwide pattern. And we have heard of the tyrannical laws that are being laid down in many nations right now. They're not going to stand, not in the face of the God of freedom. All right, he's talking about the lies. Their web of lies will become so tangled that they will work themselves into a corner with no way out. Oh, wait, that's what they were trying to do to the light. Push it into a place of being silenced and controlled with no way of escape. Remember that what they plan to do to you will come back upon them. The dark future they plan for you will become their dead end future. Do not be anxious or fearful about their desperate moves to intimidate and control you. Instead, realize it is their last attempts to hold on to power. And it will only lead to the October ruckus where the people arise and say, no more. Meanwhile, my sons and daughters will be displaying my kingdom power to save, heal, and deliver. Miracles of healing, provision, and restoration will break out. This will frustrate and anger the darkness because they thought their plans to make you sick, poor, and losers would prevail. Begin to laugh at the clumsy attempts of the darkness to keep up the facade that they're the good guys who want to help you. It's going to become obvious that they are lying through their teeth. Focus on our superior power as the forces of light and welcome the supernatural breakouts of my kingdom power. This will be a September to remember. All right, a journal nugget from four years ago, August 31st, 2020. We're going back there again because this is something I think we are going to see. My righteous anger. My righteous anger has been released against those who have overlooked and excused sin in the body. We're talking about the church now for the wrong motives. And this is why they have not, they've overlooked sin, excused sin, not been honest about the sin because they felt like they were protecting the body or their own reputations. Okay, this was four years ago before we had had all the exposures we are having in the church right now of unrighteousness that has been hidden and not dealt with in our leaders. Not only is it terrible for the body, gut-wrenching and life-destroying for their victims, but it is no favor to them either. They are living in direct opposition to the one who died for them. This cannot continue. And he spoke this four years ago that he was done with this and we are seeing it fulfilled. He said, I am declaring an end to this overlooking of sin and of hushing the voices of those who have been grievously sinned against. My righteous anger is boiling over at those who have denied my people justice and restoration. How on earth can we have justice and restoration in the government, in the family, in any place else, if it is not first in the church? All right, he goes on to say, they have, he is angry at those who have denied people justice and restoration and have instead elevated the sinner back into places of leadership and ministry where they've continued to hurt and devastate the sheep of my flock. I, the Lord, with eyes of burning justice, am now coming against those who bring uncleanness into the body and those who cover for them. I am ripping off the lid that has been placed over these scandals. And oh, is he ever doing that? 
I am exposing them, and I am demanding that they be cleaned up and true righteousness and justice be restored to my church. My church is to be a reflection of my kingdom and not a picture of how the world works. Where is the example of true justice and righteousness for the world to follow? Begin with your own heart and then join me in calling forth this cleansing and restructuring of my body. Wow. Well, that is happening. All right, let's move on to September 1st, 2024. Welcome to the September to Remember. And this word was the divide deepens. The divide deepens between the darkness and the light. Every day, the exposures of who the deep darkness really is and who the light really is are coming into view. Even the most deceived are beginning to feel uneasy about what is being uncovered. They're beginning to ask, not probably not out loud, just in their heads, what have I been supporting? The voices of truth tellers of the light are beginning to be heard by more people. As it becomes obvious, the MSM has been lying and covering up for the darkness. Your prayers and your warfare are causing the divide to deepen between the darkness and the light. And they are also causing the divide to deepen in the camp of the enemy, where once there was blind unity, there's now division in who to support as puppet leaders, and a civil war in their ranks is becoming obvious. As some people are propping up certain people, while others are openly criticizing them. It's kind of like experience whiplash in the news every day. I am allowing a divide to deepen in the light between those who believe I am still a supernatural God and those who see me as words on a page and outward conformity to their idea of a Christian life. It is stale, lifeless, and it attacks the freedom that Jesus won for you. I am exposing the sin that has not been dealt with in the hearts of those wearing a facade of holiness, and it will bring about a realization of the need to really know my supernatural power to transform the heart. This divide will be healed when I come and rescue your nation in a powerful, supernatural way and there will be no denying my kingdom reality that is coming to the earth. Those who stubbornly refuse to come out of the religious spirit will be set aside. My power and my glory will fill the land, and the deep divide in those of the light will be healed. The deep divide in the darkness will continue to widen until they split apart and all is lost. Continue your, your warfare against the darkness and continue to declare that the light will receive the revelation of who I am and come into unity around that revelation. All right, we have a journal nugget. This is from a year ago. And is this coming into fulfillment this year? This is September 1st, 2023. It's called Days of Awe. Kind of sounds like a September to remember word. <laughs> he said the next few months for you will be days of awe. Now, I don't remember last year actually being that. So I am looking for this to be fulfilled at another time. And it could be this September and following months. He said, you will see my right arm of power crush your enemies and all of their wicked schemes will ex be exposed and toppled. For those inside and outside the church not walking in the light of my revelations through my prophets of today, these months will shake them, and they will fear because they have not received insights about these times. To you who know my voice, you will see with my eyes and perceive that the attacks of the enemy are becoming sloppy, obvious, and desperate. We are definitely seeing that. As you stand your ground in faith, you will shake the empire of darkness and rattle it to its core. 
Those in fear will also be affected by your stand of faith and your faith and your hope for the future. You will be like little lighthouses all over the land, and they will be drawn to you. Speak words of hope and comfort to them and guide them into the safe harbor of faith in my promises and power and peace that I give without measure. Draw aside with me every day, and I will tell you things to come. These are the days of awe that you have been praying for. Focus on calling forth peace out of war mongering, protection from any pestilence, abundance in the place of threatened shortages, and brilliant light to arise over the deep darkness. These will be days of awe. All right, moving on to September 2nd, 2024. Bowls of glory, bowls of wrath. So this word began with an encounter that I had in heaven that morning. I began smelling a very smoky fragrance, um, kind of like incense. I found myself in what seemed to be a smaller chamber in heaven, and it had an altar. The room was full of bowls. I saw bowls filled with golden liquid being poured out on the USA, and it was lighting glory fires all over the land. I then saw bowls of blood. Bowls of God's wrath being poured on government officials, and they were no more. So he said to me, the prayers and worship of my army of light have filled the bowls of heaven. They are beginning to be poured out on the earth. I don't just think my nation is just, I saw it from that perspective, but I think it's worldwide. The pure liquid gold in these bowls of glory will light fires of hunger for me. Repentance and cleansing through the blood of my son and Holy Spirit's anointing of power. My glory fires will open your eyes to the authority you walk in as sons, as a son or daughter of the King. My glory fires purify your motives and enlarge your heart to love like I love. Your cries for evil and deception to be removed from your land and for righteousness and justice to be restored as its foundation have filled the bowls of wrath in heaven, and they are tipping out on those partnered with darkness. They will be removed, and you will see them no more. In faith, you have continued to decree and declare that my kingdom would come on the earth as it is in heaven. You will see all those prayers that you released in faith result in manifestations of my glory and my judgment. As you have been faithful to me, so I will be faithful to you. And you will see bowls of glory and bowls of wrath poured out on the earth. Wow. A few sentences from a journal nugget, September 2nd, 2023. I will make you thrive. The darkness has been working very hard to destroy your food supply, among all the other things they're targeting. Don't, do not fall into their trap of fear because it will disempower you. Instead of allowing fear to kill your faith, let your faith arise and kill the giant of fear. Remember that I fed and provided water for a whole nation in the middle of a desert wilderness. I am still the same God, and I am able to make you thrive in a time of lack and disruption. I will make you thrive so that you can be a generous supply to those around you. I want to amaze you and bless you with my great love and my power to provide an abundance for you. No fear of lack should be allowed to torture your minds. Lean in and know my love and my power to make you thrive. Isn't that just like him? All right, September 2nd of 2022, Journal Nugget, two years ago. This is one of my favorites. The Liberty Bell tolls for you. A day is not far off when the intensity of this war will release. Okay, so two years doesn't seem afar to the father, but for us, it's been a long two, two years, but 
from his perspective. And when we have won, we're going to look back and realize it happened very quickly. So anyway, a day is not far off when the intensity of this war will release. As victory after victory flood in and justice and righteousness are in the process of being restored, all over this land, the liberty bells will begin to be rung. They will toll with celebration and victory, and they will usher in a new day. These bells will also be rung to honor all the sacrifices that were made to win this war. Some names of those who played key roles will be named and honored. But for many of you, your names will never be known, except by heaven, who sees and who will reward you. Know that when you hear a liberty bell being rung, I am ringing it to honor you. Those liberty bells toll for you as well. Receive my thanks and honor for fighting by my side and for believing and clinging to my promises and my faithfulness. The liberty bells will toll for you. All right, September 3rd, 2024. This is beautiful. It's called the harmony of heaven. Are you in tune with the harmony of heaven? In heaven, there is no fear, no anxiety, no frustration, no offense, and no striving. If you experience these emotions and allow them to rule your thoughts. Now, that's the key right there, because we all experience those emotions they're part of what comes at us in life. It's what we choose to do with them that makes the difference, okay? So if those emotions are allowed to rule your thoughts, you will not be part of heaven's beautiful symphony of peace, joy, and righteousness. Out of peace comes great strength. You can face any threat or problem knowing that he is for you and with you, and that he is mighty to save and mighty to deliver. The joy of the Lord keeps you in awe of your salvation. As you look back and remember all he has delivered you from, your confidence grows that he is able to deliver and keep you, no matter what the enemy throws at you. My righteousness, he says, is not rigid, it is not unreachable ways of living. It's not rules. It's a relationship founded in the freedom that Jesus won for you. Righteousness is the foundation of the harmony of heaven. It is a song of freedom from the voices of false comforters who only satisfy in the moment and then result in the disharmony of regret and shame. Righteousness must be founded on knowing how much I love you and how much you love me. Righteousness is based in honoring our love relationship and not allowing the disharmony of offense or false comforters to intrude in your heart and mind. Ask me to tune you to heaven's frequencies, which is the frequency of my heart, and you will find that you are living in peace joy, and righteousness. Your life will sing out with the harmony of heaven. Isn't that beautiful? Mm. Two years ago, this journal nugget from September 3rd of 2022. What an amazing rescue. I love this. Years from now, when the movies are shown about this epic season in your history as a nation, people will exclaim, what an amazing rescue. They will look on you who fought this battle to save your nation from destruction and your lives from being consumed by the darkness. They're going to look on us with awe and deep respect. They will be very thankful that you stood in faith, fought valiantly and sacrificed for their freedom. You will enjoy the movies too. Because you will see the scope of the war and what was going on behind the scenes in both camps, the light and the dark. Understanding will come about all the plot twists, turns, and surprises. You will be so glad you believed me 
and fought through to victory, you will look on in wonder at the sacrifice of those who pretended to serve the darkness in order to sabotage from within the enemy camp. America will have her heroes again. Of course, you will especially enjoy the climax when I suddenly stepped in and rescued your land and the whole world changed. As you fight valiantly every day, remember to face each new challenge from the darkness with faith and, and declare, this plan of darkness will not stand and I bring it to nothing in his mighty name. What an amazing rescue is in store. All right, we're going to do our action items. Here they are. We are to sow foolhardy decisions into the camp of the enemy. Ask the host to make the bit of foolhardy decisions irresistible to the conflicted darkness. The bait. Ask the host to make the, not the bit, the bait of foolhardy decisions irresistible to the conflicted darkness. Ask for angels to whisper suggestions into the enemy's camp that make foolhardy decisions appealing. Send arrows of fear of the future, failure, and loss into the camp of darkness. They shot those arrows at us, but we are to boomerang them back into their camp. Take authority over the dark fire and bind its power to cause destruction and fear. You've been given a fire hose of power. Aim it at the fire and say, the flood of the river of life is being poured on you. And we will say the darkness is extinguished. This is how you will stay strong in the fierce battle and how you will finish well. Abide in him, in his strength, in the warring, worship, and wonder. Declare and decree that America will rise again as a beacon of my hope and freedom to the world. She shall not die, she shall live. The more you learn to tune into the movements of his heart, the more peace and rest will fill your life and strife and anxiety will disappear. Ask Holy Spirit to make you super sensitive to the movements of his heart. And you will be on the path of divine union with him. And it will give your life purpose, grace, and deep rest. Do not take the bait of the enemy's intimidation or discouragement. Ask me and I will strengthen you in the inner man. Do not back down and do not back out. Remain faithful to the end because your reward will be great. Continue your warfare against the darkness and continue to declare that the light will receive the revelation of who he is and come into unity around that revelation. Focus on calling forth peace out of warmongering protection from any pestilence, abundance in the place of threatened shortages, and brilliant light to arise over the darkness. Begin with your own heart and then join our Father in calling forth his cleansing and restructuring of his body so that it aligns with his righteousness. Lean in and know my love and my power to make you thrive. As you fight valiantly every day, remember to face each new challenge from the darkness with faith and declare this plan of darkness will not stand and I bring it to nothing in his mighty name. What an amazing rescue is in store. Well, that, that was a whole week and going back years of amazing confirmation that we have been hearing him, that we are moving in his direction and uh, accomplishing his purposes for our nations as we cry out, as we stand as sons or daughters of the light and call in his kingdom, his purposes, and his ways. And our great prize, not only will be our rewards, but to have drawn so close to his heart. That is an incomparable treasure that will make your life worth everything. To be so loved and so valued 
is incredible. It causes you to rise up and live out your purpose when you finally realize how much he loves you. All right, let's end with the word of prayer. Oh, Father, thank you for this amazing group of the nations that you have gathered together as a family to lean on you, to call on your help, to partner with you and the mighty forces of heaven in defeating the darkness that sought to wipe us out and to mock your name. They will not stand and you will have your day as you rescue this nation, call it back to life and bring us into the whole new era of the kingdom age. Thank you that we are alive at this time Keep uh, calling us deeper into your presence so that we are so closely partnered with your heart and that we hear your voice. Thank you for the blood of your son that made it possible for us to be one with you again. And thank you, Holy Spirit, for your working in our lives, transforming, guiding, counseling, comforting, leading us, showing us the pathway, revealing truths to us. Mighty three in one, we love you, we worship you, and we thank you for calling us into this season of dark to light. We win. In Jesus' name, we proclaim. Amen and amen. Oh, thank you all so much for joining me today. Thank you for your amazing words of just thanks to the Father. You thank me for you know, my part that I'm doing in the army. Um, and it, it just blesses me all the way down to my toes. Um, you're an amazing group, this army of light, just beautiful in my eyes and in God's eyes. So thanks for all the comments and um, just all the sharing that you do. The more we have praying, the more we have in hope, the better. So. God bless you. I love y'all. I'll see you again soon. Bye for now.